Hello, see me here the righties. Have here another Renault traffic to look at. Okay, so if I start the engine up, we have spanner lights and check engine sign on. Check stop and start sign as well there. Check injection system, check anti-pollution system. That's it. You can also get um, engine failure hazard message as well for these types of faults. So I'm gonna use the Eurotab 3 from Launch UK. Do a scan and we'll click high speed scan. Battery open circuit, and then we have upstream pressure of the turbine particle filter clogged. Preheat and diagnostic, so a lot of the usual stuff there. Inlet pressure, consistency, coherence, the boost pressure, and atmospheric pressure. Inlet air circuit outside of upper limit. Okay, let's go in and look at some live data. Uh, let's see if we can find a boost pressure. Don't know if we can find atmospheric pressure on here. Uh, oh, there it is. Must have spelled it wrong. Um, right. Atmospheric pressure, boost pressure. Let's turn the engine off. They both look the same. Very similar. Of course, with the engine running, the boost pressure is going to change. Uh, next, I'm going to look at the upstream pressure and engine speed. little bit of a delay on that, not too much. Then we have here the differential pressure of the DPF which is 20 and we have soot grams at 41.50. Okay so what I'm doing is setting up a smoke test. I'm going to check for air leaks in the system. So we'll give that about five minutes with that running. Okay, so we couldn't find an air leak, any, any boost leaks from the airline system. So I'm just going to have a look at the air filter here. Now I can already see that it looks like it's distorted. You can see the lines are all sort of creasing in which would give a sign that uh, the air filter itself is struggling to get the air through. You see those those lines are all sort of pulled out of shape. That's what happens when it's trying to suck the air through but it's the filter itself is blocked so it sort of distorts the filter by sucking it inwards. It looks quite old. Actually, when I'm feeling it, the filter is wet. The filter is wet, so it's been getting wet. You can see we've got a puddle of water sitting here. Um, take it, some water has been getting into the filter housing. So I was looking at this puddle and thinking, is that being, you know, dripping its way through there? But the customer said he has drove through some of the floods lately. Now, if you look at these vans. Not a lot of people know this, but if you follow the inlet of your van, where the intake air pipe is, you can see that that runs down there, all the way down there, and basically, it comes out just under there. So, you know, not much more than a foot of water is going to get into your inlet there. That's your inlet pipe going to your air filter. So I think what's happened is some of that water has got into the inlet and may have caused all of this, what's going on here. Okay, so we've got a new air filter here. We'll get that fitted in. 
Okay, so this is the next step I'm doing. We're moving this upstream pressure sensor pipe and we're gonna have to unblock this metal pipe down here. Okay, we've now broken through that with some cable. See that little metal pipe down there? This soot gets just blocked up in there. Okay, so this sensor looks like it Maybe damaged really. It's got melt. It's sort of melted, so we're going to replace that. Okay, now that's all done. We've replaced that. We're going to come down to the glow plugs, which are down here. So the tool that I normally use for these glow plugs has broken. I've lost a pin out of it. So I'm going to make uh, going to make something up. So I've got a quarter inch ten millimeter hair with a swivel socket on. The only problem is, is when you trying to put it on the glow plugs, it's a bit too bit too wobbly just because it we need to sort of get it in at an angle so I'm going to use one of these o-rings and slip that over there get that focus in we're just going to slip it over the edges just so it's in there like that now what that'll do that'll allow me to be able to swivel but it will stay in that swivel position so I can get it attached to the glow plugs inside the head you see the glow plugs are down here. Let's get light on. So you've got to sort of come under at an angle. There they are. So if we test these four glow plugs, I've taken them out, and it is no surprise number four that has failed. Now I did check on this van, and I did replace the glow plugs on this March last year. So just around about a year and a half ago. So unfortunately, it's not covered under warranty. The part I could have had like a free replacement from Bennett's was the supplier, but it is common. These glow plugs, I've had them fail a couple of times now. So yeah, it's not the first time I would have fitted glow plugs to a uh, Renault Traffic and then sort of a year later, you get them or one of them fail again. It's always number four. Like I said before, you get the corrosion, you get puddles of water sitting in that chamber where cylinder where number four sits. Um, so, I mean, even a dealership, I suppose, even if it was sort of six months within the, the warranty of the part being fitted, you could imagine that they could say, well, the warranty is void because you've got water and corrosion around where glow plug number four sits. Um, obviously, I'd be happy to change it. It wouldn't cost me anything, but um, fortunately, they do have to be purchased again from Bennett. So, um, we'll probably just go ahead and stick a whole new set in. Okay, now we're under the van here, disconnected the DPF pressure pipe. This one is one of the rare Vivaros that has the DPF underneath the van that you can access. And now we connect up our cleaning gun here. Right. We can squeeze the trigger. Get that pushed in. Okay, so now we've got all of that fluid in there. This is the fluid that we use and the gun, Launch UK stuff. Okay, now we go inside, we start the van up, give it some revs. Now we're just going to clear the fault codes. Just read, make sure all of these codes are cleared. And we go to data stream. Gonna hold the revs up on this again. We keep an eye on this pressure and the soot grams. So just holding the revs around sort of 3000 RPM. And just keeping an eye on the temperature, the soot and the pressure. Okay, we're getting this pressure down now. See the soot grams are dropping. So we're at just around 3000 RPM. Pressure's come down where it needs to be now. Let's let it idle. Eight, so it's a slight, slight bit above where it should be. It should be hopefully around six, but we're not completely finished yet. So we heard some rattling coming in from down here and something's fallen off of the van. It's a crankshaft damper. So while we've got it in the air as well, I can see that the shock absorber is in a terrible state also. Okay, we have had this on a test drive and none of the fault codes have 
return for the stuff that we've done there. Obviously now we've just highlighted some more issues with the crankshaft uh, pulley. Taking the crankshaft pulley off, so this is how it sort of came apart. That bit the section is there, that section comes off. That's got the rubber damper on it, and then you can see this bit was about to come apart as well because that's separating. Okay, so we have now sorted, the DPF is sorted, we haven't had the manifold correlation code to come back. I'm going to assume that was because he drove through a puddle of water, um, got the air filter wet. Some of that water, of course, is going to travel through the airway system that could muddle up the um, sensors. The blocked upstream pressure sensor again can cause confusion with boost pressure. Um, but now we've had a little bit of bad luck with the um, crankshaft damper or whatever you call it. Okay we managed to get a new crankshaft pulley from BGA. That's it magically fitted. Okay that's the new pulley all fitted on. Now we can just lower it down. And we're just about done now I think. So that's it. I'm all finished on that one. And see you on the next video.